All right, hey YouTube, this is my template for a waterproof survival kit. Feel free to use this design, add, subtract items uh, to fit your, your specific needs, but this is what I came up with. This survival kit is designed for some type of more uh, waterborne environment, whether it's a boating or a tropical vacation. Um, this is designed for to handle survival needs in that environment. The last thing I'm gonna say about this kit is that I made this kit with the thought that this is a survival kit and you're gonna have your phone, your charger cords, your possible external battery if you're on vacation in another kit, as well as your mask, snorkel, fins if you're on a boat, that type of thing, separate. So this is everything but those things. Um, so if you feel like you need uh, external batteries, charging cords, whatnot, then that is something you can add on your own. So before I get long-winded, let's get to this kit without delay. All right, so first off, let's talk about the bag. This is a Pelican Roll Top Waterproof Survival Bag. It's 2.5 liters total capacity and pretty well made. I'm a big fan of Pelican products. Their Pelican cases are world-renowned for being durable. Um, the reason it has this little window on the front here is if you are on vacation and you need some kind of waterproof container for your phone, you can then slip your phone into this little um, separate envelope here in the front and still manipulate the screen while keeping it waterproof and keeping any additional water uh, products in here that you need to keep waterproof. That's the design for the bag, but I repurposed it to make a survival kit. All right, so first, my shoulder, or shoulder strap. This is something I've demonstrated on past survival kits, something I made using some paracord. Specifically, this is Parapocalypse cord from Atwood Survival. It is a uh, modified survival cord to make it more useful. I have about 25 feet of Parapocalypse cord here, orange in color for high vis, and then I have two of these Metolius locking carabiners for just multi-purpose item. I'll show you real quick what the Parapocalypse cord looks like. So this is it with the inner strands exposed. So you'll see I have the standard um, strands that you would have in normal paracord, but it also comes with this 10-pound uh, monofilament fishing line. It comes with some wax jute for fire starting, um, as well as they call it Dyna-X 160-pound breaking strength strand, and then I believe this is Kevlar uh, strand here as well. So just more functionality. You can remove strands, use the sheathing, uh, and you have a lot more capability with this type of uh, paracord rather than the standard paracord. So that is a shoulder strap. Um, and as you'll see, I also do have a ton of cordage here. So that would only go to that as a last resort. Last thing I'll say here is this is my inventory kit. It's a two-sided kit, laminated, just for quick access of uh, products, or the inventory of the survival kit if you need it. So. Let's get to the inside. And I'm gonna kind of speed through this because there's a lot of uh, stuff here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on kind of going over descriptions. I'm just gonna state what it is, what it's for, and move on. All right, first thing here is a orange cotton bandana. I got this off Amazon, it's pretty large. And just has some, some survival uh, tips here. Uh, obviously, pair, or bandanas are good for multiple things, bandaging, filtering water, signaling, all right, next, I have uh, some, this is a uh, bank line. So about 30 feet of bank line, specifically this one's for ridge line. So I do have a shelter component, which I'll show you in a second, but this would be specifically for making ridge line. All right, so this is an ExoTac rip spool, just a repair type tool. It's got 50 inches of cargo tape here, and then on the inside has an O-ring sealed little container with a sail needle for sewing repair. And then lastly, it's got this braided line here you can use for a fishing line or use with the needle to repair clothing and things. And then this is an ExoTac little zipper pull. It's got some fire tinder on the inside. Next is uh, just a slingshot band, self-explanatory, catching food. And then also you can use this to create a pole spear using um, a, a little uh, spear attachment I have in here so for spear fishing so slingshot band. 
All right, next, my water purification. This is my, my first line system here. So this is just a squeeze bag along with a Sawyer micro squeeze filter. Purifies water and is the easiest way to go, less labor intensive than boiling. So that is my water purification system. Next, I have a little uh, flashlight. This is a Thru-Night TI3 version two. Put some high-vis tape on it as well as a high-vis lanyard and this is a pocket clip that's reversible. The reason I went with this is because it's a AAA flashlight. I have several AAA lithium batteries which have a long shelf life. But the main reason I went with this is because it has a great moonlight mode. So I think it's 0.4 lumens, will last literally forever. And if you need more light, you can then uh, twist and get more light out of it. But I love the moonlight mode on this and it's very inexpensive. So that's my lighting. Next, compass. This is a Helicantex wrist compass. It has a glow in the dark capability and just a rotating bezel for sighting. Rudimentary, but good to have a compass. All right, and then just uh, some lithium, extra lithium batteries for my flashlight. These are two extra, and I have one in the battery, or one in the flashlight, so that is three extra batteries total. All right, next is my fixed blade knife. This is a Mora Garberg in stainless steel. Has a 90 degree spine for striking ferro rods, scandy grind, full tang, have a little high vis, little lanyard there. This is a sheath edition that has the diamond sharpening side as well as a side for a ferro rod. Um, shot cord orange and then on the sheath itself I have about five feet of Gorilla Tape that I cut in two. Uh, this is two inch Gorilla Tape that I cut in half. Um, and then at the bottom here there is about five feet of electrical tape. So multiple different uses on, on the tape here and then ability to start fire and sharpen. All right, next here is two of these Coglin tent stakes. These are ABS stakes. So in addition to providing the ability to tie down a shelter, you can also scrape these with a knife and use this to start a prolonged fire. All right, so this is the bulk of the kit here. This is an SE mess tin with some Ranger bands holding everything together. I'll get into that in a second, but first let's get to the bottom of this kit. This is my little fishing kit. We'll get into that as well. This is my shelter idea. So these are two Titan Mylar blankets, orange and reflective on one side, orange on the other. And then I've included my idea for a shelter kit. This is about two feet of Gorilla Tape, two inches and then four Prusik using the micro cord. Idea being tape the corners, punch a hole through, uh, feed the Prusik through, make a lark's foot with a toggle, and then you can use that to attach to a ridge line to create shelter. Um, shelter to just keep rain off, reflect radiant heat from fire, and then an additional one for a blanket or if you wanted to create a slightly bigger shelter. And then last look here at this uh, little bag. Like I said, 2.5 liters can be used to transport water. You can also fill this with water, drop some water pur purification tabs in to purify water. Um, very well made. And I weighed this thing with everything in it. It was about 4.4 pounds. So really not that heavy, but it has a lot of stuff, a lot of usefulness. All right, first let's get to this fishing kit. This is my first attempt at a fishing kit. Um, so let me know what you think. First of all, I have two large ranger bands, obviously fire starting capability and cut these up for small rubber bands. I have an extra large here around the side to kind of semi waterproof the kit. Um, and then we'll just talk about this real quick. These are just little fishing knot cars, waterproof cars, helping you to create um, fishing knots. The reason I included this is that if I were to give this kit to somebody else or I would be um, taken out, I guess someone else could then read this and then fish using the, the knot guides. All right, so let's get into the bulk of the fishing kit here. So this is a little hinge survival tin and on the inside, I got some of these grim workshop survivor cards. So basically like a, a little stainless steel, hardened stainless steel card that has the ability to punch out little items. So this one has a bunch of different fishing hooks on it as well as little, uh, lures. 
This one's adhesive, so I stuck it to the top of this tin. And then once you peel out one of these hooks, you can use it and then replace it in the back of this is, a, is adhesive as well. So it keeps all the, all the items there. Grim Workshop lure card, multiple different lures to add to some line and some hooks. And then we'll get into the kit. So what I did is I got a Rule the Wasteland survival fishing kit on Amazon. It comes in a little round container. It's a really well-made kit. And all I did was just repurpose all the items into this kit. Um, so if you want to know specifics of the items, go look up that kit. I'll just kind of briefly go through everything. So a uh, fly, a bunch of gummies here for bait, large and medium sized hooks, um, some more, a little bit medium size and smaller hooks, three bobbers, a bunch of uh, various sized weights swivels this is something i added so these are uh, four large safety pins the idea with these is that i could use this section in the end here with that little eyelet cut it off bend it to a 90 degree and then fasten it to a pole to create a makeshift fishing pole that's the idea behind that a little leatherman ps4 the rule of wasteland kit comes with a little spring-loaded pliers that you can unfold but i felt like these were better better quality as well as having uh, scissors and a knife that were better quality as well high vis lanyard this is a grim workshop hand reel stainless steel i already pre-wrapped it with a 30 pound test about 90 feet of it and you can see there there's a little um, lures that you can pop out as well i just use some electrical tape to kind of secure everything, but that is my hand reel. Some leaders, different sizes and strengths. These come in the Rule of the Wasteland Survival Fishing Kit. And then some treble hooks, some, a large, and then looks like large, medium, small. So treble hooks are good. Trying to stick myself. And then lastly in this kit, I have, if you can see there, it's called a um, surf and turf card. So basically it's a pop out harpoon that you can put together. And then that is what I would use with my slingshot band. If I were trying to create a pole spear to spearfish, use it like a survival spearfish type thing. Um, if I had access to fish in the water. So that is the idea for that. So that is my fishing kit. And let's get into the bulk of this survival kit. So this is a SC mess tin. It's made out of aluminum, pretty well made. And I've used some extra large Ranger bands that kind of keep everything together. It's got a little fold out handle. You can use this to boil water. But the lid does not have a gasket, so it's not exactly waterproof, but in the waterproof bag, it's more than um, safe from water. So this kit has a lot of stuff in it. I'm gonna kind of speed through it here lid no gasket this is my first aid slash water kit here this is going to be familiar to those who have been uh, watching my channel in the past so some steri strips small and large obviously closing up wounds some tagaderm to cover some wounds keep it from getting infected We'll get into the water component in a second here. The idea just being covering wounds, keeping from getting infected. So four bandages, two packets of triple antibiotic ointments, uh, one thing of Benadryl, two tablets for allergies or as a sleep aid. And then these are little floss singles, 20 inches of dental floss that I would then use for the water kit to tie off the bag. Actually, I have five of these. I have three paper coffee filters filtering water before purification. If I'm trying to use my Sawyer Squeeze, it's good to pre-filter just so you don't clog up the filter. You can extend the life. And then I have four of these 
Wazoo water reservoir bags can be used to store water and then 32 of these aqua tab water purification tablets. So place one tab in the bag, let it stand for 30 minutes, it purifies the water 32 times capability. And then like I said, with the floss single, tie off the top of the bag, let it go to work. Next, little uh, hygiene stuff here. So I have two of these disposable toothbrushes with uh, built-in toothpaste. I also have uh, three of these petroleum jelly packets for hygiene purposes, as well as uh, tool lubrication and fire starting capability. This is a Best Glide ASE wire saw. These are the little handle rings here and I have two of the blades. So the idea, obviously you screw this in, screw it down, and then you can create a bow saw. These things can cut through metal as well, so multi-use. Couple sections of Wazoo industrial grade aluminum foil. Multiple uses here. Don't need to go into that. These are Wollapack stand-up water purification bags. So these are one liter bags that will stand up on their own. And they have a built-in little twist tie to uh, tie off the top of the bag so if you're trying to purify water. Wizzy wipe towelettes, too large, too small. I'm not gonna take them out, you guys know the deal. Uh, compact little pucks you get water on, they expand, and you can use them for hygiene purposes as well as fire starting water filtering, whatnot. Supplements, huge supplement guy. The uh, Think Smart Nootropic from Whole Foods, just to help you out your brain. Caffeine, 200 milligram tablets, nine total, and then electrolyte tabs, these are uh, 10 total. And I'll go, I guess I'll explain my philosophy with food. I don't really include a lot of food in my survival kits. The reason being that anyone who's gone through intermittent fasting knows that there's that point after which your body kind of changes gears, your mind clears up, you have energy, um, and it takes a while to get to that point, 24 to 36 hours. If you pack food in a survival kit, it's great, but it's really not gonna do much other than satiate you temporarily, and it's gonna kind of reset the whole intermittent fasting, brain clarity stage back to zero. So it's kind of the whole philosophy of, you know, give a man a fish versus teach a man to fish. So I could waste some space with some food, some granola bars, whatever. And yeah, that's great. It's going to make me happy for a couple hours, but I'd rather use that space in the kit to include fishing supplies, slingshot bands, a way to procure food. And you can go a week without food pretty comfortably. It's not fun, but it's not gonna kill you. And in that time, you can be learning that your area and the game, and then uh, fishing and getting food that way. So non-lubricated condom here, just for waterproofing items. And this is an Exotac four hour candle tin. It's a beeswax candle just to warm up your environment. And then you can use the tin later on once you go through the candle for creating char cloth. Gorilla super glue, fixing wounds, repairing tools, gear. I know it's not popular to say this is good for fixing cuts and scrapes, but I've used it many times. It does kind of hurt a little bit. It has a little bit of a heat when it's drying, but in the end, it's uh, not that big of a deal. And obviously there are surgical grade super glues you can use, but it works fine. No medical advice here, obviously. I'm just telling you what I use. This is my kit, so feel free to change it as needed. This is a little catch-all kit here. See, I've uh, had this in my other kits, so some hair ties, multi-use Victorinox tweezers, Victorinox a little toothpick, small carabiner, split ring. This is handcuff key, just for fun. And then I have a couple, uh, two large, two medium sized safety pins in addition to the ones in the fishing kit and then two bobby pins. So just pieces of metal that you can manipulate to make tools as you see fit. Fresno lens, multi-use, obviously, uh, fire starting, whatnot. This is a grim survival or grim workshop line card so it's about 12 yards of high strength wax line can be used for fishing repairing gear with a needle um, 
basically whatever you need it for. And then I included a Grim Workshop little knot card. So this has just a reference to a bunch of different knots. Like to go along with the uh, fishing knots, someone who's not well versed in tying knots can get by. This is my signaling idea. So DOT, reflective tape, white and red. And then as well as two by two um, little adhesive acrylic mirrors. They look kind of foggy because there's a protective film on here. The idea being keep one in your pocket or adhere it to different things to reflect the sunlight and signal an aircraft or search party if needed. Because ideally you'd want to get rescued rather than spend time um, marooned on some island. This came in the Rule the Wasteland survival kit. This is 15 pound test, 150 feet of additional fishing line. Travel eye drops, cut the back off to make them fit better. 10 drops per container, you know the deal. I've, I've gone over these in my past videos. So this is 20 drops total. So 10 uses if you're putting a drop in both eyes. This is additional redundancy when it comes to lighting. If I can open this. Streamlight Nano, one of my favorite lights. Uh, has a high-vis little lanyard on it. And what I did here is use some heat shrink tubing to uh, contain extra batteries, uh, uh, extra button batteries. So batteries in here and then an extra set. Lighter, this is a little mini Bic lighter, has three Ranger bands, a small zip tie to uh, prevent from accidental depression, Gorilla tape on the inside, and then lastly I have some wax uh, jute, or I'm sorry, waxed candle wick cord that can be used to extend the life of the lighter. So if you need to use the flame for a prolonged period of time rather than run the lighter, burn the fuel, you light the candle wick and then use that to burn and then accomplish your task. USD wet fire, waterproof fire starting tinder, one of the best. This is a Wazoo survival fire plug wrapped in foil. I've gone over this in a past video. I can put the link up top. Um, this is what I call my tindy roll. But um, each of these little uh, waxed fire plugs can be used multiple times for multiple fires. This is a UST Fire Spark Micro with a tinder wick and then extra, extra, you can see in there, um, little flints. So it's kind of a self contained little fire kit. You can use this tinder wick to create multiple fires as well. Just redundancies with fire because it's so important. This is my Victorinox Farmer X. Has a blade, scissors, saw, and then an awl, as well as the standard um, Victorinox tools. So well made, pretty hardcore, and then has the Exotac little lanyard for having a additional fire tinder. Wazoo survival, survival whistle with the high-vis lanyard. Comb, because if you got hair, you don't want it to be all over the place. Look like the guy in Castaway. Will look good when you get rescued. See your compass from County Con, little button compass. So I have the wrist compass and then redundancy with the button compass. This is a Fisher backpacker space pin, as well as write in the rain notebook paper, seven sheets, and then I have four large paper clips with a little, as you can see, little hooks that I made on the end there. This was from a comment I had in one of my videos, and I found it useful. If you need a hook, you got it ready to go. Additional fire starting capability. This is a Baylight ferro rod and a ceramic striker on some high vis micro cord. This is a Grim Workshop little tool that's designed to strip off. If you find a bottle, uh, like a two liter bottle, you can then use this to strip off a constant diameter plastic that you can use for cordage. Some more Gorilla tape. This is about four feet, two inch Gorilla tape, flat folded, multi-use. Sorry about the AC kicking on in the background, but it's hot. Um, Wazoo Survival trail markers, zip ties, red and white, reflective, multi-use, low profile. And then some shelter components. So some more um, bank line. This is a little bit smaller diameter, about 36 feet here, and then some micro cord. 36 feet as well, just additional ways to secure things and make shelter if needed. And lastly, 
through all my zip ties. So two large, a little more hardy, sturdy, reusable zip ties. So you can see here, you can uh, depress that to reuse them, un unfasten them for whatever you're using them for. And then these ones are not reusable, but you can, using a tool, reuse them if you need to, to depress the little uh, lever in there. So these are the Wazi Survival Orange High Viz zip ties. And then these are just Amazon brand black zip ties. And like I said, the idea behind this is if I'm trying to create a makeshift fishing pole, I would then use one of these, bend it up, and then route the fishing line through that, secure it to a, a piece of wood using the zip tie, and I have a makeshift fishing pole. So that is my waterproof survival kit for maritime and vacation type settings. I hope you liked the video. Please, please comment and let me know if there's anything you would do differently as well as like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.